What's going on guys, your boy Ooch. Um, so, I want to make a one take on my impressions and review my thoughts. Everything that's been kind of juggling through my mind about Joker. Um, so I, I saw it yesterday. Um, funny enough, I actually, me and brother Ooch took Mama Ooch to see it for her birthday. Um, and honestly, I mean, it wasn't like a bad gift. Um, but we kind of weren't expecting the movie to be as it was, um, which I mean, not, not for anything. I'm not trying to say that like it was a bad thing, but the movie, I can see it being very controversial. I know the internet's very mixed on it, but I don't necessarily take what the internet has to say for anything of too much value or too much fault because... I'm the kind of person that likes to go see something, um, read something, watch something, um, and make my own opinion of it myself. Because um, honestly, the saying, you know, doing, you know, doing things on your own or like getting things done, like the best way to, to get something done is to do it yourself. Um, and I feel like people should really make their own opinions up off their own um, and not really rely too heavily on, you know, what others might think because... People make their own opinions based on how um, whatever piece of material makes them feel. Um, speaking of material, um, I know that um, a lot of comic book fans are, you know, a lot of them might feel mixed um, about the film, especially since, um, again, this is an adaptation. So, um, and from my understanding, there's several different um, Joker timelines or Joker stories. Um, and a, d a bunch of different origins that make up a bunch of different types, um, a bunch of different Jokers, I should say. Um, and this one, really, uh, I felt like from what I was told, based on um, the events that I shared that happened um, with Bree, she told me that it, it, it sounds like they kind of took um, bits and pieces from certain um, stories and kind of combined it into this movie, which... You find in other, you know, series like, you know, Marvel does it too with their movies. I mean, and it's kind of expected because the adaptations are supposed to be, you know, th like the, the, the studio's take on, you know, what has already been seen in the comics. I mean, you can't expect them to create something that's a one-to-one -to, -one to some kind of origin or some kind of story when there's literally so many different things to take from and naturally as a fan you might find um, enjoyment in all of them and the best way to do it without it kind of being too convoluted or too messy or too all over the place is you kind of take bits and pieces from each one and then make up your own new you know timeline or new story or what have you so with all that uh, put to the side, I, I, I now want to talk about how the movie made me feel. Now, I am not by any means a huge DC fan. I can't say that I am. I'm a fan of their works. I'm a fan of some of their heroes. Um, and I have to admit, I did enjoy m the majority of the movies that they put out. Obviously, Aquaman and Wonder Woman are like my two favorite films that they've done. Um, but I did, admittedly, I found enjoyment out of Batman vs. Superman, Justice League, even, you know, the Man of Steel movie. I actually did find enjoyment out of those. I know I might get heat for that, but I do like to see um, a lot of the good that comes from these movies because they're, they're not terrible. Like, if you want to see a terrible film and a terrible adaptation, you want to look at a movie like Dragon Ball Evolution. That, I, I don't think I've seen a worse adaptation probably um the last airbender that, that, that those two movies and arguably definitely the death note film that netflix did those were most certainly the worst versions of any kind of adaptation that you could ever find with you know there being some kind of source material as far as joker goes um i've never read a single joker comic in my life um, I obviously know Joker because I used to watch the Batman cartoons back when I was a little kid. And, of course, everyone knows who Joker is. He's one of, like, Batman's, like, you know, like, probably one of his top villains, I would say. Um, so I, I had no kind of preemptive thought. I didn't have any kind of expectations going into it. 
And it, I came out of that film like really kind of sad, depressed, almost feeling bad. Um, because the movie tackles a lot of real things that have a lot to do with what's going on in, especially today's time period. Like, you know, mental illness is a huge, huge thing here. Um, and I'm not really too sure if any of the Joker's origin stories tackle those, um, themes. Uh, I'm not really sure if Arthur was or suffered from any kind of mental illness in the comics, from my understanding, there's so many different stories where it's like there's a lot that they didn't include. For example, this story, and I guess I should say this now, this is spoiler territory. So if you've watched the movie, definitely continue watching. If you haven't, I would highly recommend keeping a tab open, go see it, and uh, come back to watching the rest of this video. Um, but the movie is, it basically shows um, Arthur... In his, in his events leading into his snap. And his snapping moment is when he really embraces and embodies this new persona, which he then accepts as the Joker. And that isn't literally until the very end, the climax of this film. You know, I don't even know if you should call it climax, because it's like, you're, you're watching a movie about a villain. You're watching a movie about the person becoming this character, this villain, you know, this person that is going to undertake all this malicious, um, like this malicious attitude, this, these acts, he's going to commit hella crimes, kill mad people. And you, you, you're watching that and you keep that in, in the back of your head while you're watching it. But the movie kind of writes it, the, the, the writes itself in such a way where at first you you see and understand the dude. This dude's everyday struggles. He was an old, like he was a single dude who clearly had some you know some issues. All right. Um, I don't know if you would really call him socially awkward or if he just actually suffered from a mental illness. But he had one of those cards um, that he would give to people if they you know were looking at him funny or. They were disturbed by his constant laughing. And the movie used his laughing as like a condition that he had. And so the card basically described that and he would hand it to somebody that was like near him if they were kind of on edge or feeling off or they were about to like yell at him or something so that they understood that he's not laughing out of, you know, necessity or not, I should say necessity. He's not laughing because he thinks whatever is going on is funny, especially during the worst times. It's like one of those things where it's kind of like his body just reacts when he feels any kind of uncomfort or anything like along those lines. And and it, and it, and it created a lot of crazy um, instances within the film that, again, ultimately built up to this Joker overtaking um, characteristic. And... And it, and it, and it, it's it's insane, dude. Like it's it's very controversial. Like he he low key saved a girl from potentially being raped in this film because of his laughter. He got jumped, and this was the second time he got jumped in the film. The first time he got jumped by kids. He got jumped by kids because he was doing his job. He was being a clown, and he was you know twirling a sign. He was like a sign twirler, and. He got jumped because Gotham is already in shambles, right? You know, everyone's wild and doing all this crazy stuff. And, like, you combine his immediate surroundings with everything that he's dealing with. He's taking care of his mom. His mom is, like, sickly. He has a clown job. All he wants to do is he's an aspiring comedian. You know, he wants to, at, at his root, he all he wants to bring smiles to people and to make people laugh. And especially when, you know, some kid, you know how kids just stare at you like for no reason because they don't know any better. It happens to all of us, right? You would have kids stare at him and instead of being weird or rude, he would just try to make them laugh. He would do like, you know, dumb silly faces. And they wouldn't they would find some kind of enjoyment out of it. But of course as adults or as, you know, a teenager or anything like that, 
they're going to judge him and not even think like, oh, maybe something's like, you know, something's up with this guy. And or they or they just, you know, kind of just like tell them to leave their kid alone or something like that. And it's just a, it's, it's a whole mis, miscommunication and this whole disconnect that he has with the world. And it's through all of these events that literally and, and that's that's why you feel bad. That's why you feel sad because in an, and this is what I said in an alternate universe for Arthur, the character that becomes Joker. He could have became Mr. Rogers. Now, I know that might sound crazy, but if you think about it, like, he had, like, this this glimmer in his eyes, man. Like, he had, there was, a, there was a peaceful side to him, but it was literally the world that he was directly involved in. And then especially the buildup to where he found out the truth about his own family. The fact that he thought that Thomas Wayne, Bruce Wayne's uh, dad, Batman's dad, right? He had, there was that one point where he thought that Thomas Wayne was his father because his mom was constantly talking about him, talking about him, trying to get him to respond and take care of them because apparently they had something going on 30 years ago when she used to work for him. But the truth of the matter is it turned out that his mom was the psycho one the entire time. And that this dude, Arthur, was abused. He was adopted. And, like, all this crazy stuff. And, like, it caused him to just have this complete breakdown. He threw, he put himself in their refrigerator. as, And I took that as a symbolism of him just trying to numb himself of everything. And it's like, you watch all this stuff happen, and it's just like, damn. Like, you're just saying damn a lot. It's like, ah, oh, dude, like it's crazy, man. And it's like, and you forget you're watching a movie. In most cases, you know, most films you watch, you 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 want to see some kind of resolution. You want to see, you know, there be some kind of bright side to this. I mean, the guy was so messed up that he literally, in his own head, created a person of comfort that he could go to. But what? But she wasn't even real. Like she was. It was based off a real person. It was based off a neighbor that was within the same apartment and the same floor as him, and he used that as somebody to kind of make him feel better. But it wasn't real because it didn't actually happen. He just literally thought of it, imagined it, and I, and of course we don't we don't realize that until like towards the end of the film. But man, like, it was wild. As I, I can understand the controversy. Now, the thing is, I, I do have to address this. I, I, I didn't read any of these articles that um, that, that came out when it, when it came down to, like, people walking out of the theaters and stuff. I just saw the headlines. And I got to say this, guys. At the end of the day, we have to, we have to, in 2019 and on, I mean, this shouldn't even ha- be, ha- this shouldn't even have to be addressed but people really need to start learning how to differentiate reality from fiction. Okay, because again, this is a this is an adaptation based off of a comic book character that of course shares and discusses a lot of real life themes, you know, mental illness, um, you know, crimes and, you know, good and bad, all that kind of stuff. All all those all those narratives and all those themes and ideas and you know, all that kind of stuff, those things are always going to be implemented in comics and in other types of media and entertainment. Why is that? Because there needs to be some form of, um, you know, like relation. Like sometimes viewers want to feel like they can relate to certain characters. And I'm sure that there are people out there, unfortunately, that can relate to this dude. Now, I'm not saying they're going to end up turning into serial killers, but, I mean, that's something that's pretty real. And it's unfortunate, but, like, this is this is probably one of the most realistic comic book movies that I've ever seen. I mean, like, and, and not to mention, of course, it was rated R. Um, there was definitely some, you know, I wouldn't say gory scenes, but there was, you know, obviously there were some killings. Um, and like I went back to when I was talking about you know how he low key saved this girl from potentially being raped. Like this man was put on the news 
as a killer, as a murderer. And I'm not even trying to right his wrongs because, yo, killing is not good. It is not a good thing, okay? Don't condone it. It sucks. Death, I'm not a fan of death. For those that know me a little bit, I don't like death at all, right? However, at first, this was a self-defense tactic. This, this dude got jumped by three college kids who were trying to mess with a an individual female minding her own business on the freaking train, reading a book. And because he was pretty much right there and he noticed what was going on, he you know, it triggered him to start laughing uncontrollably. He couldn't he couldn't help himself and he was trying to even get his card out to hand it to these dudes before they could freaking start assaulting him. And once they started beating up on him, that's when he whooped out his gun, which, funny enough, was given to him by a co-worker after the first assault that he had because he felt like he needed to feel safe and to feel some type, type, some kind of, you know, protection within himself because, you know, his, dude, this guy was so fragile. Like, he was skin and bones. Like, I cannot, I cannot, like, stress that. Like, he actually was skin and bones. You see this dude with a shirt off a lot of, a lot during the film. You see his whole rib cage. Like it's 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 borderline disgusting. Like he was so unhealthy. It goes it, it just goes along with how it makes you feel overall because it's like you see this dude's life from from this point where it starts and through all the events that play into each other one after the next. And there's just and but but the reality is that this dude was messed up since birth, since he got adopted. I mean, who knows? We could sit here and talk about what could have went right to prevent him from turning into the Joker. We could have talked about what could have went right from preventing him from maybe killing too many people. But at the end of the day, like right after that that second assault, he shot the first shot, killed the first kid. And once he realized that what he did worked and, and stopped him from being hurt, he just kept going. And that's where it went from self-defense to manslaughter. And that's messed up. Okay, because of course when you kill somebody, obviously everyone that's around there is going to be scared for their life. That's exactly what happened. It's not like they tried to continue to fight him. They started to run. They wanted nothing to do with this crazy dude, and guess what? They that's what guess what happened to them? They died. But when it's funny enough, because he doesn't even mention how he doesn't even bring up how he was he was attacked multiple times that that no one no one just no one listens, no one understands. Like the he's always needed somebody or something to just help him overcome whatever he's got going on internally. That's part of the mental illness thing, man. I mean, this, like I said, this movie is very conflicting. I feel very conflicted watching it. It's a great movie. Greatly produced. Acting was amazing. Um, you know, they even set up Batman within this film. I will I will also say this um they even they like when I say they set him up you see young Bruce Wayne of course you see Thomas Wayne you even see Thomas Wayne and his wife get killed in an alleyway in front of Bruce right as the character of the Joker was truly born I feel like I don't I feel like they are they may not need to make a sequel I feel like they could just go into making this new Batman film that's standalone. Because they set up, they literally got the Gotham City set up. It's in chaos. There's fire everywhere. The Joker is now here, is a thing. And who knows, maybe after this, you know, whenever, whenever we see him the next time, he might don the purple suit. That we, I was expecting to see the purple suit. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting him to see him in red. But honestly, that 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 wasn't a big thing for me. You know, as far as accuracy goes, I feel like in a lot of origin stories, we see characters dawn. Oh, excuse me. Wow, they, we see them dawn a new 
or different um, type of suit until they get to the point where it's like, all right, here's the, the, the more familiar one. But like I said, after this origin, and there was no after credit scene. Um, and I'm and I'm okay with that because it, it, I feel like it would have been out of place if they did, like if they try to add too much or take or, or 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 have something in there that had nothing to do with it and that would have taken away from the overall experience. Because I'll tell you this right now: once you leave that theater, man, you're not you're not feeling good. You're really not. And I'm not gonna and I'm not gonna tell people to not see it. I'm actually telling people they should see it. But I'm gonna tell those um, that if you have kids. Or if you have younger siblings, or if you have anyone young that you know in your family, I would say under the age of 14, 14 and younger, do not do not show them this film. Do not show them this film. I can tell you that as a mature viewer, you need to watch this film and understand that we kind of just really need to be more unified we need to we need to really um be there and try to be more understanding towards one another because you know when you put someone that has something wrong with them in an environment that they're in or if their surroundings are just full of people you know not listening properly constantly being made fun of belittled it can just turn into something disgusting and ugly and it can cause a lot of pain and far worse later on and if we're and if we're trying to achieve world peace at one point man we got to we got to really start stepping up our game with each other so that's what i that's that's the takeaway i got from joker man cuz i'm over here thinking like yo if this never happened if this never happened if he was told the truth but maybe he handled it like they they handled him in a, a different situation who knows he could have been mr rogers <laughs> he could he could have been mr rogers man but all right that's pretty much all i really have to say guys the movie was fantastic in 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 its own right but again just be wary of the 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 warnings that i do give out to you guys like it is not it's not for the faint of heart Okay, so with that being said, let me know what you guys thought about the movie and what I had to say in this one take video for you guys. Um, if there's any other like topics, subjects, things that you, I should check out, you want to hear my, my one take uh, reaction, review, whatever, let me know in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe, hit me up on Twitter, all that fun stuff. Take care of yourselves. Have a great one. May the power protect you. I will see y'all next time.